So what advice could you give to those young people who are super creative, but don't know like, or have the motivation or the support to design and be creative instead of thinking about, you know, money and, you know, a stable job and those things. What advice would you give to those people? We ran a program when I was Dean of Design at OCAD called It's My Future Toronto, where we introduce eight to 12 year old black indigenous and POC youth to design. And part of that program was showing them that there's, first of all, in design, there's so many different areas of design that you can be engaged with. It's reminding a lot of people that there's a lot of jobs that are actually in creative fields and um, and the penalty of not following your dreams, right, is unhappiness. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Bianca B, and welcome to the Bianca B Show, where we talk about business, finances, and friendships. So I'm super excited about today's guest, Dr. Elizabeth Dory. She is an anthropologist. She is an author, a visionary, has created impact to our community today. And I'm super, super excited to chat with her about the designing space and the things that she's learned throughout her career. How are you? I am very good. How are you? Good. So I'd love to start off each episode with what is one life lesson you take with you on a day-to-day basis? Uh, Know my worth. Mm. Know my worth. Um, It's, uh, I think, particularly as a Black woman and one of a, co- a woman of color, that many times uh, people seek to underestimate you, people seek to um, diminish you. And so one of the most important things that I've carried with me every day is to know my worth. Wow, I love that. You know, and what age did you realize your worth? Pretty early on, like lucky my family was uh, very good at reinforcing my worth. Um, so I think I've always, I've always known my, I've always known my worth and my family, uh, again, has been super supportive to make sure that I knew my worth. I I would say that I've been constantly have to prove it to other people, um, and guard maintaining that sense of self-worth, uh, for myself. Wow. I love that. And so, you know, you're the first black and Black female dean of a design uh, faculty. Can you kind of walk us through how you fell in love with design and how this opportunity, uh, clearly you proved yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of walk me through, when did you fall in love with design? Um, I think I've always been in love with design. Uh, when I was maybe about 10 or 11 years old, there was a book that we had called Make and Do, which had all of these design activities that you needed to complete. And I think I spent like an entire summer doing everything from making castles out of cardboard to stamps, using stamps, uh, potatoes to make uh, graphic stamps. Mm -hmm. So I think I've always loved design and art and making. And then later on, I combined that with my love of people through anthropology. So I have a PhD in anthropology from Stanford. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've been bringing together my two worlds, which is Uh, the world of making, which I love, and the way in which humans make and how that's the way in which we transfer culture from one generation to another. So how I became the first first Black Dean of a Faculty of Design is um, OCAD University was looking for a dean who could help them through a process of decolonization. So again, respecting Indigenous ways of knowing and being. I've been living in Australia for about six years and working really closely with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. So when I applied for the job, I was probably one of the few candidates who had really, really worked with Indigenous communities and brought them into design where um, in Australia, um, um, we had created a program that integrated design with Indigenous ways of knowing and being. That's amazing. And so, you know, you said your upbringing, your family supported you with design. Oftentimes, um, people don't support the creative space, you know, even jobs like film and TV and all those things. A lot of families don't support that and think, you know, what design you want to do that? Like, that's not longevity. So what advice could you give to those young people who are super creative, but don't know, like, or have the motivation or the support to design and be creative instead of thinking about, you know, money and, you know, a stable job and those things, what advice would you give to those people? 
Um, well, I think, you know, I run into a lot of people who said, oh, yeah, I wanted to be an artist or some, or designer or a creative person. And then I ended up going into finance because my family wasn't supportive of it or I couldn't figure out a way. But now I'm actually needing to return back to it because I realized that I've lost my soul yeah. <laughs> in pursuing that. So I, the thing, we ran a program when I was Dean of Design at OCAD called It's My Future Toronto, where we introduce eight to 12 year old black, indigenous and POC youth to design. And part of that program was showing them that there's, first of all, in design, there's so many different areas of design that you can be engaged with. So like, I was like, oh, I want to be the director it was like, well, but you can actually be the set director or the <laughs> designer or in the production side of things and not just be the shiny star, right? Yeah. So I think it's reminding a lot of people that there's a lot of jobs that are actually in creative fields and um, and the penalty of not following your dreams, right, is unhappiness. That's yeah. and and I think you know our parents may want us to be secure, but they also want us to be happy and full of joy. Mm -hmm. And so finding that way to make money from the things that you enjoy is the it is the path to to happiness, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to talk about your book, um, Decolonizing yeah. Design. Uh, kind of walk, <laughs> yes, walk us through this book and what people can learn from it and uh, discuss with us this book. Yeah. Um, so Decolonizing Design is a book I wrote in 2020, uh, produced by MIT Press with a Black and Indigenous design team. I want to shout out to the, the design team. Um, and it's really about um, the way in which we need to understand how we position ourselves in creative fields vis-a-vis -vis the Indigenous struggle for sovereignty, which we have playing out right now in terms of politics and around the world. Yeah. Um, for Black folks in particular, it's about understanding what it means to be a super token. Mm. Um, and by super token, I mean an individual whose talents are so desired by institutions that they are able to overcome temporarily, in most cases, their aversion to the identities that they hold. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to be a super token and what responsibility you have as a super token to uh to create pathways for other people to get into the institution and dismantle things and change things and not just be the center, new center of power, yeah. uh, but to actually make it so that the institution is more open and acceptable to all kinds of diversities, right? Okay. So it's really just a guidebook of like, how do you do that, particularly in design, but more applicable. Yeah. Um, and the way in which we need to dismantle our mythologies of where creativity comes from, mm. meaning mostly everyone says Europe, <laughs> yeah, uh, changing the standards so that Europe is no longer our standard of creativity, that we find creativity in our own unique heritages and cultures and ways of being in the world. Got it. And so, you know, you've lived kind of like all over, it seems like. Kind of walk me through some of the favorite countries you lived in and how you like got started and some of the art artists that you met throughout the years kind of walk me through your journey a little bit yeah um so I grew up in Indianapolis Indiana so in the midwest yo midwest yeah, Detroit, <laughs> okay <laughs> uh then I uh did my undergrad at Rimmer College on the east coast and mm -hmm. so Philly uh which I think of now is like uh uh, just a great place to really uh, get to know down to earth people. Like we, we're we're down the earth in the Midwest, but it's another way to get to know down to earth people. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up uh, doing my PhD at Stanford in California, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then I <laughs> went to Chicago for ten years, uh, and then I went to Australia. But I oh, was sorry travel part there was that I spent a lot of time in Ethiopia that's where I did my PhD field work mm, uh, so understanding like blackness from the perspective of like Ethiopia and Africa moved to Australia after graduating um, not too long after graduating um, to work at at Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia mm. got to learn about black folks <laughs> <laughs> uh, down under 
uh, and then I've moved to Toronto, Canada, uh, where I've now recently just moved to back home to the States in LA. So awesome. all over the place, um, meeting amazing artists. I focus a lot on kind of Black and Indigenous artists. And so there's just too many to mention in terms of just who've been so fundamental in my journey and my learning as a creative person, but also as a person leading creativity with and for other people. So I love that. And I love that you moved all over because a lot of people never leave their hometown, you know, and it's risky. It's hard, you know, yeah. moving to all these different places. I, I've lived all over too. And it's, it's, it's challenging. What have you learned about yourself, you know, throughout living in multiple places uh, that's important to you where you are today, you know? Um, I think the thing I most have learned is how to maintain your integrity mm. and authenticity. So it's a thing where, uh, especially when you're traveling to a new place, your your first protective action is to try to adapt and become like them uh, so that your difference doesn't, you know, that you feel safer in your difference. And especially as like a Black woman, right, traveling around the world, right, you have to be very conscientious of like feeling safe. But I've realized over the years and having traveled so many places, like the the most safety I can find is being as authentically myself as possible. And that offers the opportunity for people to connect with me also in an authentic and real way, which is how you build community. And it is only through community that you're actually safe. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then also earlier, you mentioned being, I think you said super token. Yeah. Sometimes in a room, you're sometimes the only Black woman, right? <laughs> and how have you dealt with that, you know, throughout your career? Um, I think the important part is that I've accepted the responsibility of being a representative of all of the, let's say, the vulnerabilities of the communities that I embrace when I'm in that room. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I first got my job at OCAD University as dean and my therapist was saying, oh, no, Dory, don't hide your don't hide your emotions. You actually have to show your emotions because every single person in that room is wanting to know how you are going to react to this idea, to this decision, mm -hmm. because. Uh, if it is going to be harmful to anyone that you are in community with, you need to show that, that your passion, right, <laughs> needs to show the impact that you're representing um, for those communities. So in, in that way, um, it's always hard and you have to build allies. Like I always talk about the fact that um, when you're the only one, you can always be out outvoted, <laughs> So you have to have allies and and be very strategic. At one point in time, an uh, indigenous colleague of mine, we 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 made a deal with each other where I would speak about the indigenous issues and he would speak about like the, you know, the black issues or the other racialized issues, just so that we could mirror solidarity in the room and in the conversations, and thus others could feel more comfortable being in solidarity um, with us as well. Um, so it's all of those kind of strategies of making sure that when you're in the room, you're not alone in the room, that you're yeah. bringing community with you, that you have uh, allies um, and demonstrating solidarity with you so that even if your voice feels small, <laughs> it amplifies um, the concerns of the communities. Mm. I love that. And, you know, what advice would you give to, you know, people going to college, going to school, and sometimes, you know, being that creative person and sometimes the only Black person, what advice would you give to that young girl out there who is, you know, trying to make it and in, in sometimes being alone or feeling alone? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I always say, find, find and build if you have to your own community. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. You, you, especially if you're in a situation where you're trying to bring social justice, you're trying to bring um, equity, um, inclusion, diversity, all of these things into the environment you're in, you need to have a community and maybe that community is not immediate to where you are, right. but it needs to be kind of, uh, you need to connect with people because that's where your strength and sustenance um, will come from. Um, and then, then show up 
you know, show up as much as you can, right? Because one of the things of being sometimes younger and new is that you are sometimes the most vulnerable person in the room. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you have to figure out how much risk you're willing and able to take, but understand the risk of not moving things forward, the risk of not taking a risk, right, Mm -hmm. Um, is is failure, right? So you have to kind of keep pushing things forward um, but do so in a way that um, you're maintaining your good sleeping, you're maintaining your good health, you're maintaining your good connection to f- friends and community, has uh, many of the times the systems that are in place are not meant to be supportive of us. So we have to create our own support mm-hmm. within ourselves, within the communities we build, so that we have a very strong springboard by which to bring about um, the change that we want to see in the world where we can belong more in the world, right? I love that. And so, you know, what's next for you? What What are your visions and goals for this upcoming year? Um, so I've started a new uh, consultancy called Dory Tunstall Inc. Mm-hmm. with my partner, uh, Kate Lee, business partner, Kate Lee. And we're taking, I've done a lot of work in the academics uh, sector around decolonization, diversity and equity, and I'm bringing it to industry, especially large industry players, um, to help them build, again, respectful relationships with the cultural communities that they want to embrace. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of places think of DEI as just hiring, <laughs> but it actually uh, is about how you embrace communities that are your customers, that are your clients, that are your audiences in a way that is respectful. Now you need people on the inside to help guide those decisions, but you also need to be doing the things that build those relationships with community. So my job at Dory Tunstall Inc. is to come in and help accelerate those processes so that they're building, again, respectful and authentic relationships with cultural communities like Black community, Indigenous community, Latinx community, et cetera. That's amazing. I love that you said that because sometimes we're just a stat instead of actually embracing the community. I, I, kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I thank love you. that. I love that. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to chat with me. Where can people follow you and where can people buy your book? Uh, yeah, so uh, website is coming, but it's at dorytunstall.com, D-R-I-T-U-N-S-T-A-L-L.com. That's coming soon, probably in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then right now, the best place to find me is on Instagram. So Dory, D-R-R-I underscore Tunstall, T-U-N-S-T-A-L-L um, on Instagram. And then uh, in terms of the book, Decolonizing Design, there's a website called Decolonizing Design Book. Uh, so you can just uh, search for that and you can find me um, the find the book, all the information, tour dates. I'm going to New York uh, uh, for the last bit of my fall tour. Um, so you'll find all the information about the book there. It's your girl, Bianca B. Follow me on Instagram at it's Bianca B at Bianca B Show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hey.